good evening. Welcome here to Rudy's at Slide and the South Loop. You put your heads together tonight on this Thursday night here on the Texas Tech Sports Network from Learfield. There we go. Yes, indeed. As these Lady Raiders off to a 12-1 and start. They've won 11 straight as we'll visit with the head coach of the Lady Raiders. For some of you, are you saying too loud? Up. Okay. All right. Well, we had tested that earlier, and now they're saying it needs up. All right. Does that help right there? No sound at all. Okay. All right. Well, see, one of the joys of live radio, Coach. I see it. Yeah, I, t- I see it. Yeah, all right. Let's see. All right. How's that? Is that better? In the house, we're not hearing something. Hmm. All right. They see, must we, have we turned the radio down. Yeah, they must have. They must have done something here because right before the show, we're able to hear everything. A okay, great. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna try one thing right here. All right. Now does everybody hear me? Hey. hey! All right. All right. All right. It's amazing when you got the right things plugged in, what you can actually accomplish. Coach, good evening. How are we? I'm good. How are you? I'm great, great, great. All right, 12 and 1, the start on the season. A couple of wins right around Christmas, the win against Cal Riverside before Mississippi Valley State after. We had talked some about the importance of those games, yet how difficult at times it can be to play those games. But kind of speak to just the benefits of playing right before and right after the Christmas break. Yeah, well, clearly you. Everybody tries to play before Christmas, right? I mean, you want to play a couple of games when you're not in finals, after finals are over, um, and then just right before Christmas break so you can send your kids off for two or three, four days um, so they can be with their family. But you just – we got to get games in, and you want to play as much as possible um, just to continue to get in a rhythm. Um, so before the game, though, I mean, before the break, it's kind of a trap game, if you will, at times, especially when you play at home. Um, just because your kids are looking forward to to having a couple of days off. And so you don't want to overlook an opponent. You don't want to play bad. You want to, you know, you want to play well going into the break and just really build on it. After Christmas, we strategically put that game there um, because we know that there's going to be a little rust, right? I mean, there's, it's even, even if it's just three days off for girls, that's difficult sometimes. And um, when they come back, they're just a little rusty. They need to get their second win. They need to refresh their memory and get focused. So it's kind of nice to play a game right after Christmas, um, after Christmas break, before conference when things really get started. So that's why we put that game there, knowing that it was going to be probably ugly. Um, you know, I mean, we, we had one day prep. Uh, we brought them back on the 26th. We had two a days, tried to get them in shape as much as you can in one day, you know, after a three-day off period, and then played. And, and you know, really the, the game started off exactly how I thought it would. Um, I thought that the first time out I told our girls, I said, we are getting great shots. They will start falling. Like that's why we play mm-hmm. the game. Is That's why we play it there on the 27th is to get some of that rust off, get our legs back under us, you know, get back in a rhythm. So I really liked the shots we were getting. Of course, it would have been nice if they would have fallen early for us, but I thought our kids kept grinding it out, and, and we shot the ball better as the game as the game went on. And, of course, come out with the win on Tuesday against Mississippi Valley State uh, by 20-plus. Kind of let's go talk a little bit through the non-conference portion of the schedule. I mean, you sit here at 12-1. and one, uh, It's a great accomplishment. There's just over 20 teams in America that have either no losses – or one loss in Division One, and Tech is one of them. Uh, just kind of speak to the gauntlet that you've run through here, and there, because there's definitely been a lot of high notes. Yeah, for sure. I think I think November um, obviously was the tougher part of our schedule. I think that we, you know, knew we were playing in the preseason WNIT, and that was going to come with a, a, a Power Five school, and it came with Colorado on our home court. Um, you know, we knew Jackson State was going to be tough because they played in the conference tournament. I mean. NCAA tournament last year, they they uh, won their conference. Um, did we intend on losing that game? No, but I think that we did learn a lot from it. And we also played really shorthanded. You know, Kat and Bree, neither one played in that game for us. Um, and so we were down two seniors. But um, I still saw a lot of fight in our kids at times, particularly towards the end. But what I loved about the next game playing Colorado is that that was the very next day we had to forget about Jackson State and really come back and fight. And our kids grew up a lot, I think, in that game. Um, They learned how to push through fatigue. They learned how to 
defend people that were bigger than they were. Um, they were down a significant amount and came back and got it into overtime and then won. So that, to me, was a really defining moment for us and a defining game. Um, when we went out to um, – and then we had to go over to Lafayette and play mm -hmm. on their home court. And they're in the Sun Belt, and we've, I've came from the Sun Belt, and I knew how difficult it would be to play at Lafayette. And so that was a good non-conference um, road game for us. And then going out to Vegas and, and with all the adversity and distractions that there are playing in Vegas itself, but also just in the ballroom and that tournament itself. And the c opponents we played, I mean, Mercer and Middle Tennessee are both picked to win their conferences. Middle Tennessee played in the NCAA tournament last year. Another really good team who ended up beating Louisville, who was, Handily. I think, number five or six in the nation at the time by over 20. Yeah, so... Um, so that was a really good win for us. And so those games were all, I think, m the tougher p piece of our schedule. And then when we got to December, we played at home, and not really by design, but we did play at home the entire time and got to practice a lot, um, which really, really helped us. And we saw a lot of different, um, you know, makeups of teams and a lot of different uh, attacks. You know, we've got we saw some – three-point shooting teams, we saw some really athletic teams, we saw some, um, you know, bigger teams. So all of those things were good for us to play against different types of strategy. Well, uh, when I started looking today, I mean, you, you talk about the Colorado win, they're 10 and three. Middle Tennessee State, we beat Middle out in Vegas. They've not lost since. I mean, in addition to the Louisville win, they've won five or six, they've won six in a row since we played them. I mean, those are going to be two great wins that I think are going to stick when we start looking at resumes and things like that when we get into February. For sure. And, you know, Sam Houston State, you know, they'll they'll play really well in their conference. So Sam Houston State or Corpus Christi A&M, I think both of those teams um, are maybe picked. One of them's picked to win and the other one's maybe second or third. So those two teams will win their conference. And that's kind of – that's kind of how, how when you're trying to build your program up and you're trying to build a resume where you um, can maybe get in the tournament as an at-large bid but also gain some confidence in your kids because our kids are haven't won. You know, they haven't won in two years. And so we have to, we've had to teach them how to win. So our, our conference schedule does look – our non-conference schedule does look different than Iowa State's, who is a proven team, who has all their players back. But it also has built us up, I think, and prepared us – um, f for an opportunity to get in the NCAA tournament if we can do some things in the Big 12. But also it's prepared us for Big 12 play in all the different styles of play that we played against. Uh, a little bit later on in the program, we'll talk about Iowa State. And of course, they come in on Saturday. We've got tickets here for you if you're in the house. Even if you have your tickets, and you probably already do, grab some, bring friends. We want a big, big crowd on Saturday afternoon, 2 o'clock at United Supermarkets Arena, closing down an eight-game homestand. I, I, was, I was talking to Andrew over here and Jared beforehand. I've almost forgotten how to pack a bag. Right. I know. <laughs> we're we're, we're going to be glad to get on the road at some point. But um, but we're, I'm so excited about playing Iowa State at home, uh, right, first rattle right out of the box. Um, clearly, you know, our, our, our fans travel. They go to Houston, and they obviously had a great support system there for our football team, which congratulations to Coach McGuire and the football team. That was so exciting. It was. Um, we know our fans travel to Texas when our men play down there. So we just want our fans to travel to the USA, right, on right. Saturday. Absolutely. And pack that thing at 2 o'clock for the women because uh, it's going to be an exciting game, and we need their help. We need a home court advantage um, in the Big 12, and especially against a team like Iowa State. Now right now we're drawing number three in the league. Let's let's get that on up to number one That's right. in the Big 12. And, Coach, before we take the first time out, your thoughts on, for the first time this year, receiving a vote in the top 25 in the coaches' poll this week? Yeah, I mean, that's that's an area that we want to get to, obviously. You know, and, and um, I, I feel like it probably was Coach Finley who voted for us because I think he's the Big 12 rep on that on the, on the voting committee, which is fantastic, and I think that shows that he's given us some respect. Um, you know, we, we've got to beat some people in the, in the Big 12, obviously, to, to continue to receive votes. And, and obviously our goal is to get in the top 25. And I, I think we can do it. Um, and I think this team can do it. And uh, it's just a matter of taking each game one at a time and, and playing really well and, and playing determined. And 
I wouldn't be surprised if we start getting more votes. Absolutely. As we're going to take our opening time out here at 610 here on the Texas Tech Sports Network. Glad that you're with us here at Rudy's at Slide in the South Loop. Come by. Come get your tickets during the break. You also see question slips out there on the tables. Grab those. Get your questions. Bring them up to us. And around 645 or so, we'll have Coach answer as many questions as you bring up to us. But right now, we're going to take the opening time out. We'll have more here from Rudy's when we come back after this time out of the Tech Sports Network from Learfield. Thanks, Jack. I saw you. All right. Hello, hello, hello to y'all. Now down, 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 down. Okay. All right. How's that? How's that? Is that pretty good? All right. There we go. All right. All right, Dylan, do we sound all right to you back to network? We sounding good? Okay, all right. I think I've got my situation fixed here. This. Thank you, sir. All right. We've got at least another. If you want another bite or two, it's at least another minute. Thank you, sir.
as that was a three there by Bryn Gerlich on Tuesday against Mississippi Valley State. Glad that you're with us tonight here at Rudy's at Slide in the South Loop here in Lubbock. Make a basketball move here to Rudy's. Enjoy 100% Hill Country smoked meats, Rudy's signature sauce, and delicious sides. Don't forget, if you've got a catering need, whether it's 10 or 100, you can call them right here at Rudy's, 806 797 1777 and 806 797 1777 or come in and visit with anybody on staff here at Rudy's as we continue our visit with the head coach of the Lady Raiders coach Krista Gerlich and coach's team seems like they're a pretty united bunch a tight bunch they have fun together and I really think it started on the trip to Greece and you know I know you've talked about it at different points but we, we've not talked about it here on the show yet but I guess speak first to the the thought of being able to go overseas. Why Greece? Why this year? And how it all kind of fell into place? Yeah, we we strategically um, scheduled that when we got the job because um, I do think it's super important to for team bonding, for building chemistry, for um, just that experience, the extra practice days. Um, <laughs> And, and really, we tried to schedule it as quickly as we could um, that enabled us to obviously raise the money and then, um, and then to recruit for the kids that we wanted to take, to be quite honest, um, you know, for the, for the ones that we knew were going to be um, an opportunity to have a really special team. And so this summer we have, um, you know, we, we really are really proud of our roster and, and we feel like we're really deep and that we have significant pieces um, f- and, and and all of the missing parts, if you will. And I think that they, uh, that, 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 that tournament or that experience just really gave us a, an opportunity to number one, practice 10 extra days, like we've talked about before, but number two, go over to a foreign country where it's just you and the team. Like it's literally just the people you w- rode the plane over with and, and you have to just stick together and you learn so much about one another and you're creating memories and experiences that you can't do on a basketball court. You know I mean? Sure. You're like eating different foods and you're talking to people that don't speak English and you're shopping and you're learning about their culture and all those things. And it was just so exciting to do that and to see these kids be in a different element and to, to see, you know, what kids really connected. And uh, it's funny that you said that just about building that chemistry. Cause that's what we're trying to do for this team is that's what that trip was for is build that chemistry and that camaraderie. And I just happened to be um, walking in the Womble today after practice. And two of our kids were walking across the court, uh, the, the street together, right after practice. And it just went through my mind of, oh, you know what? It doesn't really matter what kids are walking together. Like there's all kids that hang out with one another. You know what I mean? Like you have, you have your best friend here and your best friend there or whatever. But like this team, like I wouldn't be surprised with any combination that's walking across together, communicating, whatever, because they all get along really well and they all have different relationships with one another, which is fantastic, which is what you want. And they all are supportive of one another. I mean, I don't know how many people follow us on social media, but, you know, when, when we get a freshman of the week in the Big 12 or um, if somebody, you know, hits a double-double for the first time or if Kat gets her 500th assist or whatever, like everybody on their on their Twitter or stories or whatever are reposting it about one another and and just encouraging them. Mm-hmm. And that's so important because that's how our team is built. It's about loving one another and sharing um, each other's experiences, but also just b- being encouragers of one another. They're so happy for each other's success because they know that if they're successful, our team's going to be successful. Well, you get over there, and it was roughly 10 days over there. You play three games, but but that was all the basketball that was involved because it wasn't like, okay, we, we show up and we go to the gym and we're going to work out yeah. two hours this day and then play the next day and, and on down the line. But So from that, from that perspective, the player gets maybe the maximum, so to speak, experience because you're not always in a gym or in a hotel. Yeah, so I got some really good advice before we went over there and actually before we started our 10 days and they said, you know, people that have done that before, which we've done one of those before at UTA, but not quite to that extent that we didn't stay 10 days for sure. And they were like, um, you know, you need to have a 10-day boot camp basically at home you know, work them, work them, work them because you can and there's not an hourly limit and all that stuff. So really work them, work them, work them. And then when you go, go play basketball for the three games and have fun. Like that's the experience, right? Those, sure. those wins and losses don't count. 
They don't count on anybody's record. They don't count for anything. But they did win all three. You, know, did. Four, you won we all did. three for the I record. Know, I need to put those on my record. But <laughs> uh, but they don't. But but it's just like go have fun. Like that's why you're doing it. And as a coach, I had to really go, okay, yeah, that's right. Like that's what I need to do. Because, you know, as a coach, you want to have shoot around before the game. You want to like practice the night before. You want to do scout. Like we didn't do any of that. Like we literally showed up to the gym and we talked about what we were going to do, and we played. And it really was a good experience all the way around for me and for the players, and uh, we, we definitely maximized the experience. Kind of speak to the – to the not necessarily the type of competition that you played over there, but, I mean, were these all amateurs, professionals? Because I know in Europe it is a little different. Yeah, it is. And it was different, too, because they were all on holiday. Um, they were kind of on the summer break, so they kind of had to – put some teams together for you mm -hmm. and um and and but they are some of them are professionals there's professional leagues over in Greece um the people that organized those games are basically professional agents and so what allowed what was great for our teams is that those agents got to watch our girls play and so they talked to me afterwards and were like hey um, which ones are coming out this year you know which ones are seniors um, here's our cards, like when they graduate, wow, give us that? give us their info if they want to play overseas. Um, and I think that's super important because we do need to have contacts for so, – because, you know, not very many kids are going to go play in the WNBA, but they can go play professionally overseas. Sure. And I strongly encourage them to because it's just such a great travel experience. And Greece is one of the better leagues. So it was great for our girls to be seen by those people and for them to play against those professionals, you know. And, and some of them were higher-level professionals and some of them were lower-level professionals. And so it wasn't, it wasn't tremendous – competition because those teams weren't teams that like all knew each other and that you know really really played well together but right. at the same time you know we got games in we got everybody got playing time um we again we learned how to win um and then they got seen as well for um for maybe some professional opportunities after they graduate all right one of the things i saw on on social media while you were over there was the ball itself i mean you know here in the states it's that orange you know just regular traditional orange basketball but over there it was like an orange and white ball and it was had more stripes and and different things that but the feel to that ball I'm sure for shooters had to be a there had to be a little bit of an adjustment type period at least it seemed like it Kat would you Kat, say that Kat I'm gonna need you to answer that question <laughs> oh she didn't shoot that much all right <laughs> yeah, I, I would, I, you know, I would just think it'd be a little bit different for a, yeah. for a shooter. Well, and you play FIBA rules, too, and so that's a little bit different. Like, um, the lane's wider. Um, there's an eight-second backcourt. There's a 24-second shot clock. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Am I yeah, faster, right? Okay. definitely faster pace. <laughs> yeah, so, and that was good, too, because we wanted to play faster while we were over there. We're like, you know, we're not going to – let's play faster and let's learn how to push it in transition and, and get some shots up early. So, it was well, good. Well, and, and – and obviously, you know, but at the same time, I think it, in some ways that's helped you in the non-conference part of the schedule because I've seen a lot where you may run the shot clock down to, you know, somewhere in the final six, seven seconds, but they don't panic. And they still come yeah. up with, with, with a lot of good looks and shots that go in even late in the shot clock. Yeah, you know, we, we want to score early if we can. And we want to we wanna play fast if we can, but we want to take good shots. And, I mean, that's probably what I've been – you know, try, trying to emphasize over the last, gosh, you know, four or five weeks for sure is just um, really working hard to get great shots and not just settling for the first available shot. Because I think when we execute, I think we've, our team is balanced enough and we've got enough really good shooters and really good players and smart players that if we're, if we're patient and we continue to work, sometimes we can turn down a good shot for a great shot, and that's gonna, only going to help us later. And then that's that discipline and that poise that we've been working on for, you know, when the shot clock runs down to not panic and to continue to run your offense. And to, I do think what it does is make you go, now the next screen I set has to be a great screen or the next pass I make has to be a great pass. Like it makes you really focus on the next action mm -hmm. to make sure that we get a good shot off. Uh, before we take our next time out and have Katie come up and join us, you coached her at UTA, and now you get a chance to coach her here. How different has the experience been, and how great has it been to coach a player like her? Well, um, I've known – I told this story the other day. I've known Katie since she was in the fifth grade. And, um, you know, she was a baller in the fifth grade, let me tell you. <laughs> she could hoop. 
Um, but I've known her for a really long time, and, and whenever um, we were able to sign her at UTA, I felt like we had won the lottery because I think we stole one for sure. Um, you know, clearly she's just a fantastic player, and um, what I love about Kat is just her um, competitiveness, her passion to play the game. Like, she loves the game. Her IQ is off the charts. Um, she wants to make her teammates better, and she makes them better. Uh, without them even knowing it sometimes. Um, and then just her loyalty. I mean, it's to whoever whoever she's playing for, um, whoever she's playing with. Um, she's just such a loyal um, person, and, and I just love that about her. And the thing that I probably cherish the most about getting to coach her this fifth year is um, that I have never, not one time, have I ed ever had to worry about what Kat's thinking versus what I'm saying. Like, she might, um, she might not agree with it. I would never know. And as a coach, that's huge because, um, you know, you, you, she just buys in to whatever, you know, if I tell her that, that this table is bright red, she's going to go, yes, yes, ma'am, you know, right. <laughs> and I'm going to do whatever you tell me to do. But, um, I just love that about her. And this has really been super special to be able to coach her this last year. And she's been our missing piece. Um, I knew even after we had our roster, um, somewhat set, this summer, um, I knew we were still missing just that one player. And when I knew that she was available and that she could have another, had another year and, and could possibly play another year somewhere else, um, that's we went everything we could to get her because um, I just knew that, that she was the missing piece, the toughness that we needed, the grittiness, the, the IQ, just the passing ability. She just makes other people better around her. Um, and I knew her our fans were going to love watching her play. And I'm telling you this week, I've had more people tell me how much fun it is to watch her play, which I think probably it's been because she's been hurt, right? So they, right. they haven't really gotten to see her and just how much energy she gives us and how, how much she sacrifices her body to, for a ball, for a, loose, for a loose ball or to make a play or to encourage a teammate or to make a pass to, to get a, a teammate a great shot. Um, she's just really, really fun to play with and to coach. And I just, I'll be forever indebted for her to come play this last year with us. We're going to take a time out here on the Tech Sports Network. It's 627. When we come back, we will visit with Big Cat. Katie Farrell, she'll come up on stage and join us when we return after this time out on the Texas Tech Sports Network from Learfield. Thanks, sir. All right, those of you sitting out there, make sure you get your questions to us. Not in this next segment, obviously, but when Coach comes back, we'll answer your questions. So go ahead and bring them up. Grab your tickets for Saturday. At Reliant, being a part of Red Raider Nation means more than just cheering on the team. It's about being a part of a community that supports one another. As an electricity provider, it is our commitment to every customer. And it's as strong as our Texas roots. It's our promise today and for generations to come. We look forward to teaming up with you. Reliant, proud partner of Texas Tech Athletics. Reliant, PUCT number 10007. What does it take to make the perfect brisket? All right, Katie, can you hear me? Yes. And okay. Barbecue lovers Very good. Know that all right. Perfect I'm going to pot us back down. The right wood. Rudy smokes all of their meats using their delicious signature rubs and 100% oak fired pits. Get your real Texas barbecue fix today at Rudy's or on the web at Rudy's.com. 
This is Texas Tech Athletics Director Kirby Hoka. Red Raider fans are some of the best and most passionate fans in the nation, and there's no denying it. There is also no denying that supporting our sponsors is one of the best ways to support the Red Raiders. Year after year, when businesses support the Red Raiders, they help provide funding for the many needs in Tech Athletics and make games like the ones you're listening to on this Texas Tech Radio Network possible. So next time you're in need of a product or service, show your Red Raider spirit and support the companies that support Texas Tech. When you open a crisp, cold Bud Light, you know game day is here. You owe me five bucks. We mean every sound. Enjoy responsibly. 2022 Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Introducing new Bud Light Seltzer Hard Soda Variety Pack. You hear that? It's seltzer with the pop of soda, all with zero sugar. Bud Light Seltzer Hard Soda, the loudest flavors ever. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Seltzer Hard Soda, IRC Beers, St. Louis, Missouri. This is Charlie Minnick with Buddy Tolliver RV. I'm so excited to be back in the Lubbock area. Looking forward to seeing my old friends, customers, and new. When you want only the best for your home away from home, then you need Buddy Tolliver RV, your exclusive Keystone dealer offering four in Winnebago motorhomes. Because your new RV should be perfect, and this team knows how to get you what you want, and with two locations in Midland and now in Brownfield with over 400 units in stock, your new RV is closer than ever. Stop by either location or visit us online at TollerVerRV.com. That's TollerVerRV.com. As the official hotel of Texas Tech Athletics and the Texas Tech Alumni Association, Overton Hotel and Conference Center is a perfect home away from home for all of your game day needs. Enjoy stylish accommodations, thoughtful amenities, and an unbeatable location near Texas Tech University, Jones AT&T Stadium, United Supermarkets Arena, and Dan Law Field at Rip Griffin Park. We invite all Red Raider fans to join us before and after every home game where you can enjoy live music and your favorite game day food and drinks. When it comes to Red Raider fans, we've got all the essentials and more. McKinney gives it up, Farrell. Katie will take for three and hit. Yes, ma'am. The Big Cat has given Tech the lead. It's 7-5, to five, her first three of the year. As that, that was, was the call, call the other day as Texas, Texas Tech State beat Cal Riverside, Riverside right, right before, before the break. break. As it is, 632 here on the Texas, Texas Tech Sports, Sports Network, Network from Learfield. Glad, glad that you're with us this Thursday, Thursday night here at Rudy's. And as promised, we do have with us here on the stage, put those hands together for our 6'1 senior, senior, Katie Farrell, the big cat. Katie, how you doing tonight? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Man, I'm doing great. All right, first question out of the shoot. How did you get the nickname Big Cat? Everyone asked me that. But um, actually, I had a friend back when I played about like third, fourth grade. Is a family friend of ours. He kind of just made the nickname of kind of how I play and just, just, you know, all over the ground. And one day he just started calling me Big Cat and it kind of just stuck. So so even in third and fourth grade, you're diving on concrete and you're diving for balls even then? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'd come home, knees all bruised up. So nothing's changed. I tell you, it's, it's been very contagious. And a number that our man Andrew pulled up today, in six games that you've played in, there's a There's stat a called plus minus, plus minus out there. I don't know if all of you are aware of what plus, plus minus, minus means. means. It means how, how your, your team, team performs while, while you're, you're on the floor, floor. As, far as, as far as the number, the number of points, points you score, score versus, versus what you, what give, you, up. you Obviously, give up. Obviously, you want that, you number, want that number, number to be high, high you know, for obvious, obvious reasons. reasons. But, in but in just six games, and normally a good plus minus is somewhere around 10 or so. If you're plus 10, that's good. Katie, Katie in six, six games, games has had a plus-minus plus minus of plus 102. 102. Yeah, you yeah, put you those put hands those together, together for that. that. I mean, that, that, that is that impressive. Is impressive. And, and Coach talked, talked about, about you being unselfish. Being unselfish. And, 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 and it kind of speaks to that because I know as a senior, you come here. I mean, forget about all the other numbers. The only one you're worried about is the one on that left-hand side. Now that we've got 12 of them, I know you want a lot more. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's kind of how I've how always been, been is, is um, um, very passive. passive. You know, I don't, you know, I don't really, really look for my for shot, shot much, which, which I probably need to get better at. Better but, but, you know, just you putting, know, just putting my, teammates my teammates in a position, in a position to, um, to um, succeed, succeed and do well is kind of how I've always played. played. And, and um, like you like said, at the end of the day, I don't really care about the stats. I just, you know, want that win. Well, the only player in the country right now, five over 550 points, 700 rebounds, and 500 assists, I think that speaks to, uh, to the, unselfish the unselfish play. play. Now, now, in your in high your school, school days, days at, Plano, at Plano, you win a state, you win a state championship, championship your senior, senior year. year. You, you go, go out the way, the way any senior, senior would want, want to go, to go out. out. In, the in the recruiting process, process 
kind of take us through not necessarily the schools that were recruiting you per se, but what Coach Gerlich and her staff at UTA did to ultimately convince you to play for her. Yeah, I had a really weird recruiting experience, actually. I got recruited very late just because, you know, I wanted to find the, the right fit. And, you know, I just wasn't sure of how to go about it. You know, I would have coaches call me, and I wouldn't even answer the phone. I, I, I really I – I was really, um, you know, I – I was, I was picky, picky on, on kind of what I wanted. wanted. You know, you know it's, it's for a lot of people, people especially in today's, in today's day, they, they look, look for the biggest school, and, you know, and they, you know, they just want that hype to go to the biggest school, school, where for me it was just more about, more about the fit and the people, and the people around, around me. me. And, with and with Coach, coach and her and staff, staff, I immediately, you know, I've known Coach for a long time now, and I knew she's a great person. And when I went in for my visit, the staff, you know, I bonded very well with right off the bat. And in our visits, there's a lot of times where, we go, we go with, with um, the, team, the team, and, and I, immediately I immediately felt a connection, connection with all my teammates. teammates. So, so that was, that was um, the, biggest the biggest thing, like right off the right back. back. And then I had and my high school teammate, actually, Emma Halverson. Halverson. She, she already, already had, committed had committed to UTA, UTA like a couple, like a couple months, months before, before, I'd say. say and um, um, so that was also a big reason. She's one of my best friends, you know. So that was a huge reason for me to commit there. It's close to home as well. And, you know, the people were just great on my visit. Yeah, man, that's awesome. Now. The thought, the thought process, process okay, okay. You, you, you play, play two, years two years for Coach, for Coach G. G, she leaves, she comes, comes here, here. you play you for play Sharika for Wright for two years. years. Mm -hmm. Kind of take kind us, through us through the thought, thought of, okay, okay. Do, I do I want to use, to use my, COVID my COVID year, year and, and if so, so, you know, just kind of take us through that process and how you ultimately ended up here. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, so, so initially, initially, you know, I was kind of done, done. Uh, after, after the Iowa, the Iowa State, State game. game. My body, my body was, 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 was killing, killing me, so, so I, was, I wasn't I really looking to um, come, come back. back. And then, you know, last minute I kind of just, just decided, decided, you know, I didn't really want to – I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, you know, after basketball, which I think a lot of athletes kind of struggle with that. And then, you know, I thought about getting into coaching, obviously, and I was like, you know, let me just take this time to, you know, take another year and get into the portal and just – you know, figure, you know, out, figure what's out what's next, next for, me. for me. And, and um, um, you know, you know obviously, obviously when Coach when called when I was in the portal, portal, it was just something, you know, you know that, that there was, there was no, no second, second guess. guess. You know, I, I, didn't I didn't even talk to any, to any other, any other school, school really, you know, really, you know at all, just because I knew that's where I wanted to be and, you know, play for her again. And just, you know, she has connections all over, especially in Texas. So that was also a big thing for me, just figuring out what's next. Well, you get an opportunity to come here. What has the, the experience been like, been like here, here versus, versus UTA? And I'm not saying, and I'm not one's, saying one's necessarily better, better than, than the other, other, but what has this, this experience, experience been like been for you? For you? Um, yeah, both, yeah, both experiences, experiences were great, great for me. For you, me know, you know, just, just the, biggest the biggest thing for me has always been – um, just the just people, the people you, meet, you meet, you know, and, and I met, obviously, obviously by love, I love my, my teammates, teammates, you know, the staff, staff everyone, everyone knows how I feel about, about that, but just, just the, the people, people you meet, and then the, the, um, the, fans the fans of West Texas, Texas is unmatched, unmatched you know, you know you, you, like when, like when we, we play, play here, here, you know, our, our crowd's our full. We're at UTA, at UTA, you know, you, you know, didn't have as much as much support, support in terms of, you know, the, you fan, know, the fan base and stuff, stuff like, like that. that. So, so I think the fans, fans it's, it's crazy because, like, after like the after game, you have, you, have, you know, so, you know, so many, many kids, kids coming up to you asking for pictures. And, you know, that's something that's very humbling. And, you know, Coach talks about it all the time is, like, you know, you people, know, people love, to love to see you, love to watch, to watch you know, us you play. play. So, so, you know, you, you might, might be changing, changing people's lives, lives and you don't even know it. So it's something that I, you know, cherish, cherish a lot since, since I've been here. And I'm, I'm so happy I'm able, I'm able to, to, you know, maybe, maybe change, change one kid's one life. life. That's all. That's, that's a great perspective. You don't always think about it like that. When you think about it from a terms of not what am I getting, but what am I giving to someone else. You can give, obviously, leadership. Experience, experience, that sort, that of, sort thing. of thing, even though, even though you, you're, you're only here, here for the one the year. One year. Mm -hmm. Talk a little Talk bit about, about how you how feel you like you, you ha I, I, guess I guess you have, you have to be a leader, you want to be a leader, you desire to be a leader for, for your younger, younger teammates. teammates. Yeah, you know, that's, yeah, you know, that's something, something that I think, that I think you know, fifth years and even, you know, just seniors, like that's something, a role you have to step into, whether, you know, you're that type who's vocal or not. I think, I think for me, for you, know, me you know, Bailey, Bailey and Kai and our younger, our younger girls, girls, you know, it's, you just, know, it's just giving back, back to them because when I was a freshman at UTA, at UTA, we had a group, had of, a group seniors of seniors who kind of set up, you know, the, the rest of my college, college career in terms, in terms of what it looks like, what it takes to win. So just giving back to them and really, you know, 
bringing them bringing along them and along setting the standard, the standard of, you know, what you know, coach, coach wants and the, the, the culture that she wants to wants be built be here. here. How much, because you, you mentioned playing Iowa State, Iowa State, State, State and by the way, UTA, UTA they, were they were in the NCAA, NCAA tournament, tournament played, played in Ames, Ames against, against Iowa State, Iowa State, State the, the first round last year. year. Had them on the ropes. Just very unfortunate you didn't win that game because you did everything right from what I, from the little portions of the game I saw. How much of an advantage is it for you even though, Even you, though you, you don't play, play them on a regular, regular basis, basis like, like, you know, you know, you know like, like the returners the have, but how much of an advantage does it give, does it give you because you've because seen, seen them recently? Uh, I, think uh, I think it gives me a big advantage just knowing, you know, you know when, when you, you got, got a highly ranked, ranked team, team, I think they, they were picked first to win the Big 12. It's just, it's something, you know, it helps obviously playing them, but I think it's just fear nobody, you know, sometimes you have that, you might think, oh, you know, you go into a game and you're like, oh, they're supposed to be better than us, but, you know, we put our shoes on, we lace our shoes on the same way they they do, so it's just, you know, fear nobody and, you know, just um, go out and compete and play and just see what happens at the end of the day. All right, before we let you go, a couple of your favorites. Favorite pregame ritual. Oh, I would say, I would say, I, would say, um, I actually I listen, listen to music, to music and I, I put on, I like, put on classical like classical music. music so, so I would say that's my, it's my, my favorite, my favorite just, just to like calm the mind. mind. Okay, okay, all right, get you, get you focused. Yeah. I, I can understand yeah. that. All right, favorite, 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 snack, favorite snack, snack off the court. Off the court. Favorite, favorite snack. Sweet or salty? I'm gonna. So usually I would say salty, but lately I've been like had this sweet tooth. I don't know where it came from. Bailey actually, I think her grandmother made some cupcakes. And she, and she made, like, made probably, like probably 30. 30. I probably I had 15, 15 myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, so definitely so sweet right now. Right but now, um, favorite, favorite snack, I would probably say Slim Jims. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right, and final, final thing before we let you go. Let you go. Favorite, favorite, favorite thing, thing about, about being a Lady, lady Raider, Raider is what? Is what? Um, um, I would just I would say, say that's a good question. I think, I think the people, the people that's my that's favorite my thing, thing, you know, um, um, the people I've met and, and, and the, the, the bonds, bonds I've made I've here, you know, here, from, you know, from all the way from, from you know, Coach Gerlich, the head coach, to the players, to the supporting staff, to the GAs, to the student assistants, to, you know, the chief of staff, to, you know, all the way down. It's just these are people I'm going to, you know, know and love. They'll be, you know, in my wedding one day type thing. So I think that just being reconnected with them and really living, living out this, this last year, year and making, making memories, memories is, is my favorite, my favorite thing. thing and you know, you know playing, playing in front of a fan base that, that you know is great, is great. You, know, you know to me is probably you know the best, best in college, college women's, women's college basketball, basketball especially, especially so, so i think, I think that's, that's my favorite, favorite thing, thing. Katie, you worried about about speaking. speaking. You did did absolutely absolutely tremendous. tremendous. I appreciate that. Wonderful job. Thank Thank you, you, ma'am. Big Cat, appreciate you. Appreciate you. Katie Farrell joining us here tonight here on the program. The time on the Texas Tech Sports Network is 6.42. We're going to come back, bring those questions up. Come get your tickets for Tech and Iowa State. We've still got some for you. As Coach will rejoin us after this timeout on the Tech Sports Network from Learfield. What does it take to make the perfect brisket? Thanks, sir. Basketball and barbecue lovers know that the perfect brisket needs the right wood. Rudy smokes all of their meats using their delicious signature rubs and 100% okay, thank you, sir. oak-fired pits. Get your real Texas barbecue fix today at Rudy's or on the web at rudys.com. From diagnosis through treatment, make Caprock Cardiovascular Center your one stop.
Huh, yeah. Yeah, see, I would have thought it would have been in that first segment when we were when we were fiddling with it. But I got to remember this for next week. Right, that's the only thing that's changed, and now we're good. I don't know. Okay, thank you. Man, we got them. Hey, buddy, here you go. Here you go. You take, you take. She, she has nothing to worry about. She's awesome. She's awesome. Now, at UTA, did y'all even have radio? Did you have radio at UTA? Um, we did my first couple of years, and then they stopped having it. Like they just did, like, student radio. Man, yeah, that yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sir. All right. All right. Coach, do you hear that commercial coming back to you now? Yes. Okay. I'll let you hear the highlight, and then I'll pot it. Thank you, sir. As Tech was turning Mississippi Valley State over there in that second quarter as they won on Tuesday. As we're joined by the head coach, Coach Krista Gerlich, as Tech getting ready for Iowa State. All right, I've got a couple of questions here for you, Coach. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Okay. This one from Jack. Hey, Coach, who do you think has been the most surprising player so far this year? Oh, good It's a good question. question. It Jack. is a good question. Surprising. Hmm. I don't know that they're a surprise because we were expecting it, but I I have been very pleased with obviously our freshmen and um, and their impact and particularly um, you know Bailey and Jasmine Shavers. I think that they've done a great job and I I love uh, Kyla Freeland too. Like oh. she hasn't gotten as many minutes as those two as the other two have, but she's going to be special. I think she's going to be really special and just with her work ethic and. And just her love for the game, and um, she's constantly um, in the gym and asking for coaching, extra coaching and extra reps. So I think our freshmen have been, not surprisingly, but I think they've been impactful and a very good addition. Uh, no, no doubt. I mean, Kai, in fact, had a season high seven rebounds yes. against Mississippi Valley the other day. I yep. thought she played really, really well. All right, this one for Jim. As tough as the Big 12 is, which team gives you the most concern? Yeah, uh, the next one we play. Ne <laughs> <laughs> Whichever the one is next. but And in this case, it happens to be Iowa State. And I would say that they do give me concern because they're, you know, obviously they're picked to win our conference. They have so many returners coming back. They um, have an All-American and Ashley Jones. And um, and they're just really well-rounded. Um, they've got a lot of experience. Um, but I would say that every team in the Big 12, you know, is concerning um, sure. because it's a really – good conference, but we'll take them one game at a time, and, you know, the next one up is Iowa State. Well, let's talk a little bit about the Cyclones. I mean, you talk about Ashley Jones, who's scored over 2,000 points in her career. Emily Ryan and Lexi Donarski are, are third-year players for them, and, you know, there is something just to the way that, that they play. I mean, it's, it's pretty much the same. Bill Finley, 1995. Bill Finley, 2022. I mean, they, they shoot from the outside. And they just try to play discipline. They don't. They don't seem to gamble a lot on defense yeah. like some other teams will see. 
Yeah, you, no, they do not. And, and and to be quite honest, and JC's done a great job of scouting them, but um, you know they don't foul. I mean, they that's their rule. They don't foul, and if they do foul, they come out. So they don't foul, so they don't have to come out. You know, but Ooh. they make you take um, you know contested shots. They just keep you in front of you. They don't they don't try to turn you over really. Um, they just try to make you you know work for your shots. Um, they they even don't even crash the boards that hard on offense. Um, they might a little bit now that they got a six six kid, but they don't necessarily crash the boards that hard because they want to get back in transition defense and get their defense set. So, um, so yeah, they're they're the same. Bill Finley, you know, he always he always recruits shooters. Um, you know, these kids have played together for a long time, so they they know each other really well. Um, they do a great job of <clears throat> of isolating people and and making it difficult for you to double or help because if you do and they and, and you don't make them panic or you don't make them, you know, uncomfortable, then they're going to find the open player and nine times out of ten is a knockdown shot, wherever that may be. So, yeah, they're they're a difficult matchup. They're a difficult team to prepare for. But um, but I do think our kids have done a really good job this week of focusing in on our game plan and, and the scout. Well, and I think there's some advantage as well to playing a team like this real quick before our final break. The fact that they're not they're not just all up in in you the whole time allows you to run your offense and maybe flow a little bit freer. Yeah, I think so. And like I said, I, they don't necessarily try to turn you over, so it's not like pressure defense where you have to really be um, concerned about passing lanes and things like that. But we are going to have to work exceptionally hard to get buckets, um, just because they do stay between you and the basket. They are really good at um, at, at just making you take you know, tough shots. So, you know, we'll have to work our offense well. We'll have to set really good screens. Um, we'll have to, you know, attack them. And, and when we're open, we're going to have to jump up and shoot it. Um, we're not going to have to – you can't hesitate. We can't be soft. Um, we're going to have to really be um, just focused and, and assertive. We're going to come back, have some final thoughts with Coach Krista Gerlich when we come back after this timeout of the Texas Tech Sports Network from Learfield. Thank you, sir. All right, give me a time check here. Let me do this. Okay, let me know when it's Thank you, sir.
Yes. Thank you. Thank you. As that was in the win against Cal Riverside, as we welcome you back here for a final time tonight here at Rudy's at Slide in the South Loop. Enjoy 100% Hill Country Smoked Meats, Rudy's Signature Sauce, and those delicious sides. Coach, before we turn you loose here, just some quick final thoughts, some, some real quick keys on Saturday to get win number 12 in a row. Well, obviously, we're going to have to, um, you know, come out and <clears throat> really take care of transition defense and get into their shooters. I mean, they can really shoot the basketball, and we can't let them have any one pass, just catch and shoot threes. I mean, we've really got to make them have to run some offense. Um, secondly, we just got to take care of the basketball and execute our offense, you know, and be very confident in that and, and not trade buckets necessarily or um, have empty possessions. If we have empty possessions, you know, they, that's when they will extend that lead if they have one. So we've got to just do We've got to come out of the gates. We've got to play confident. Um, we've got to play together um, and just play our basketball, you know, and hopefully we'll have a big crowd there that will help us, um, you know, uh, carry on through that, that tough environment. Hopefully we'll give, create a tough environment for Iowa State. All right, get those tickets and yes. come see us on Saturday as we'll have the broadcast. Our pregame is at 1.30 with a 2 o'clock tip. 2 o'clock tip on Saturday between the Red Raiders, between the Lady Raiders and Iowa State as we definitely want you to come out and join us. Coach, appreciate you. We'll see you on Saturday. Thank Good luck. Thank you. Thank you so much. Y'all come out. Thanks for being here. Absolutely. Coach Krista Gurley joining us. She'll be back here with us again next Thursday night here at Rudy's, and we'll see you on Saturday again, 1.30 with a pregame and a 2 o'clock tip. For the head coach and for the Big Cat, Katie Farrell, I'm Mark Finkner. Have a great night, everybody.